but we have hope even in this life. And we should not just be bogged down with the cares of this world. Now, Jesus was talking about this here in Matthew and chapter 6. Matthew the 6th chapter and he's talking about from verse 19 onwards. I'm not going to read the entire, uh, all the verses of scripture here, but in verse 19 he talks about don't lay, your, lay for yourselves treasures upon the earth where, where the moth and the rust will corrupt it. But lay, uh, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Uh, that's, that's, that's the permanent thing. Paul said we don't look at the temporal things around us, but we look at, at the things which are permanent. And he says, because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If my treasure is in heaven, and if my treasure is up there, my heart will be up there. My mind will be set on heaven. I will look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith and my life and my salvation. And he says, no man can serve two masters. We can't serve the Lord. We can't serve the world. And he says in verse 25, don't take any thought what you shall eat or drink. Or for your body what shall put on. For, for that is not everything, he said. The body, the life is more than meat and body for rain, uh, raiment. Now look at the fowls of the airs, verse 26. They neither sow nor reap, but our heavenly Father feeds them. Uh, look at the lilies of the field, how they grow, they don't toil, neither do they spin. And yet I say, verse 29, that even Solomon in all his glory was not added like one of these lilies. And God clothes the grass of the field, verse 30, which, which, uh, which are there today and tomorrow they are cast into the oven. How much more will he clothe us? Take no thought, verse 31, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? And uh, what clothes will we wear, verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Uh, those times the Gentiles were the ones that didn't know the law, didn't have the law. Only the Jewish um, uh, people had the law, only they were the chosen of the Lord. But now we are grafted into that olive, olive tree. Uh, we are also, we are no longer strangers nor foreigners from the covenant of promise. We are also grafted in. We are no longer aliens now from the commonwealth of Israel, but we belong uh, to the people of God and we are no longer Gentiles but we are grafted uh, we belong we are adopted by God we, by the he's given us a spirit of adoption whereby we call our by and father but there are some Christians that are still Gentiles you know why because they seek after things that the Gentiles seek the world seeks after what am I seeking after today what am I seeking after where is my mind fixed where is my heart fixed on? My heart is fixed, O Lord, on Thee alone. My life, my dreams, my hopes to Thee are known. Is my heart still fixed on the Lord today? Is my mind still seeking after the Lord? We need to, we need to, we need to see and we need to introspect those things in our lives. Things. We need to seek, otherwise we will be bogged down with all the cares of this world and the stress and the anxiety to overwhelm us and it will be very, very difficult to live. And we will be living under our privileges. Jesus wants to live, uh, uh, wants us to live an abundant life. An abundant life is not something that's coming in the future. But we can live that abundant life right now. Abundant life doesn't mean I have abundant of money. And abundant of, of, of cars and houses and lands and property. That is not abundant life. Abundant life is when I have the life of Christ. That's abundant life. When I live like Jesus, do you mean to say Jesus was stressed and bogged down because of what he eat tomorrow? And what will happen tomorrow? No, he wasn't. He was living an abundant life. And I'd like to turn your attention to the first epistle of John, the apostle. The first epistle of John. And this epistle has a special uh, place because it was written by John. This was one of the last epistles written. Uh, this is what closed the New Testament, I believe. John was the last uh, apostle that wrote uh, the Gospel of John and then the three epistles of John. And I think uh, 
the last words of an apostle of a true man of god is is very very important i think he must have gone through the other gospels of matthew mark and luke he must have gone through some epistles that paul uh, wrote to the churches in asia minor and in, uh, but this is what john wrote before he left this earth before he died before he was was buried and he was almost 90 95 years old when he's writing in this epistle even when he received the revel- the, the revelation of jesus he was almost 90 95 years old and, and that was the age that that jesus revealed his his coming uh, to this great apostle and he had observed by that time he had observed many things around him he had seen churches being planted he had seen churches been pulled down and closed down and he had seen churches been corrupted by the devil he had seen false teachers arise he had seen christians deceived he had seen people uh, people already telling that jesus never came in the flesh now he had seen the the false teachers and the anti christs um anti christ means the one that were opposing christ it's it's, it's the opposite christ is the one that that opposes Uh, Christ he had seen that those things he had he had seen how the world was getting uh, a lot more uh, uh, more uh, uh, you can say uh, tempting where the children of God no longer had their eyes fixed on God but there was a lot of other things in the world there was a lot of political upheavals going on uh, Rome was uh, was 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 uh, was was getting stronger and stronger and uh, he had he had seen all those things he had seen and since we also are in the same uh, place today where the world during john's time was we also have um, well, there's a lot of confusion in the christian world right now there's a lot of false teachings and false teachers and there's a lot of deception and there's another gospel being preached the health and the wealth gospel so it's always safe to go to the words of an apostle who walked with Jesus himself he it's always good to and safe to go there and this episode has has a very deep message and especially what we need to major on or emphasize on in the last days what did paul or john write in his epistle it's amazing to see that some of the things that john doesn't even mention in his epistle in his letter with some of the popular uh preachers preach nowadays there's no mention of healing in this episodes there's no mention of miracles there's no men- nothing called as material prosperity in fact there is nothing called as material prosperity in the new testament there is no scripture that says if you are materially prosperous that god has blessed you there's no scripture like that in the new testament that was in the old testament that was under moses but not under jesus there's nothing called as material prosperity which is the hot topic of today's preachers which they think is a sign of god's blessing nothing can be farther away from the truth it's good to be materially blessed we're not against it it's good but if that's the only thing that determines that god is happy with me that's something very very anti christ and anti god there's no mention of any political upheavals or political situations or how you need to oppose your government and how you stand for your rights uh, in this world there's no mention of all those things in this epistle because there were a lot of problems in john's time uh, there was slavery but it didn't nothing of that is mentioned here there was a, there's no nothing for, mentioned about helping the poor people and the needy i mean that's that's all good i'm not saying we shouldn't do it that's all good but somebody said that sometimes the good can be the enemy of the best we may do good things but we may leave out the best and john spoke about the best thing the best the bible gives us the best not just the good there are many uh, may, many motivational speakers that will tell you good things there are many hindu um uh, 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 preachers that tell us good things there are buddhists that talk about good things but they are not godly the bible talks about godly and gives us the best 
the best of everything. And I want to tell you, saying that if you all, if you want to preserve your soul and keep it pure till the day of Jesus, uh, without going astray, without def defecting from the truth, let's read the Bible. Let's read the first epistle of John. And see what he majors on. See what's he talking on. The first thing that he speaks is, let's, let's read. I won't read through the entire epistle. Okay. But let's see what he talks about here in 1st epistle of John chapter 1 and verse 2. He talks about the life. For the life was manifested. It was, it was shown. It, it was no longer words and commandments. But there was an example of how do we need to live our life. The life was manifested and we have seen. He said we saw it. I didn't hear it from anyone. I saw Jesus living his life. I lived with that, with that, with the divine uh, God man for three and a half years. I lived with him practically every day of those three and a half years. And I bear witness. And now I'm showing it to you that eternal life. He says, we have seen a glimpse of eternal life. He says that eternal life which was with the Father and which was manifested to us. What an honor. There was no eternal life manifested in the Old Testament, but when Jesus came, he brought eternal life. He brought an example. He showed us how to live our lives. He showed us that. He's talking about a life that was with the Father from the beginning. Here in the fifth chapter of First John, fifth chapter of First John, verse 11, and this is the word that God has given to us eternal life. First John 5 and verse 11. God has given to us eternal life. How? And this life is in His Son. That's the life that, that, that John wants us to pursue after. The same chapter, first uh, John chapter 5, verse 20. He says, And we know that the Son of God is come. He surely did come 2,000 years ago. There is no two ways about it. He is come. And has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. Saints, is this true in our lives? Do we have an understanding? Do we have? He talks about an unction in, in, in first chapter, chapter 2 and verse 27. We have an unction from the Holy One. We have an understanding. We have an understanding and we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. We just don't know him. But now we are in him. Jesus said, abide in me. For without me, you can do nothing. And John says, we are in him that is true. Even his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. That's eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. So, so anything that, that, anything other than this true uh, God and this eternal life, we need to be careful. If there's anything that we are pursuing after, that we are setting our mind on those things which are other than God and other than eternal life, we need to be careful. We will be we will be drawn away. We won't leave this church, but we will be like the world. John talks a lot about the world in his epistle. I, I, I think so 24 or 25 times John uses the word world. So what is the world? The world is not trees and planets and, and the nature around us. The world is the religious world. He says don't be like the religious world that think they are Christians. But they are far away from knowing Jesus. From abiding in him and knowing, and knowing their eternal life. And then he talks in verse 3, first epistle, the first chapter in verse 3. Now he says, that life which was manifested unto us, that which we have seen, verse 3, and heard, now we are declaring unto you. Now we are showing that. And the reason why we proclaim this, the reason why we are showing it to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. So he's talking about life, and he's talking about fellowship. See, see what this... This great man of God is talking in his last epistle. He's not healing and miracles and material prosperity and building, building big buildings and, and laying up treasures on the earth. Nothing of, of, of that sort. He's talking about life 
And he's talking that we need to have a deeper fellowship with God because the more deeper our fellowship with God is, the more deeper our fellowship with one another will be. That's what, there's a two-way fellowship. The, the vertical and the horizontal, the fellowship with God and the fellowship between us. And if you are pursuing after, after eternal life, one sign is that your fellowship with God will be sweeter and deeper. And your fellowship with our brothers, fellow brothers and fellow sisters will be deeper too. So these two teachings we see John starting his epistle with. Life and fellowship. And then God is getting a group of people. God wants a group of people. He's getting a group of people ready who are seeking for this. Whose, whose prime, uh, prime uh, priority in life is to seek after God. And the life that he gives us. Don't just seek for his favors. But seek his face. Let's stop just seeking for our healing. And our blessings. Let's just stop seeking for the things that will make our worldly life comfortable. Don't just seek his favors. Seek his face. Don't just seek his gifts. Seek his grace. Uh, we, need to, we, need to, we need to have a repentance in our mind. Repent means turn around. Our mind needs to be turned around from the things it is fixed on right now. Right? Our minds, though we may think we are Christians, is fixed more on favor. We need favors from God. We need gifts from God. We need, we need God to give us something that will make our earthly life comfortable. Now we are seeking after the wrong thing. And that's why we can never have joy and we can never have peace. See, we can never rise above that problems. He goes in verse 4 of the first chapter and says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. It's not the joy that this world gives, or it's not the joy that we get after we have bought a new house or got a new car. That's not the joy he's talking about. It's not the joy that we have when we get married or get a new job or go shopping. That's not the joy that, Paul, that John is talking about. He's talking about the thing that Paul said in, in Philippians chapter 4, or uh, Philippians chapter 3, no, 4. And verse 4, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. That's, that's the joy that John is talking about. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Not only when things are going good in your life, but Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. That's how my joy can be full. That's a mark of the people that have come into this experience of eternal life. And the only people on earth who can rejoice in the Lord 24-7 are the ones who are pursuing after eternal life. See, in the Old Testament, as I said, they had righteousness. They had righteousness, but they didn't have joy. Righteousness was without joy. Uh, the scripture, I believe, in Romans said that Israel pursued after righteousness. And what, it, what did it produce? 1500 years later, do you know what, it, what that produced? It produced a bunch of Pharisees. It produced a bunch of Sadducees. It produced a bunch of Herodians and the Naz Nazarenes and the Essenes. And that's what that, 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 that self-righteousness uh, righteousness produced because they didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, uh, they didn't pursue after God but they had their own commandment. They made their own rules. And they made their own regulations. And it all, nothing, but it, all it produced was just a bunch of religious people who thought they were spiritual. But the Pharisees couldn't rejoice. The Sadducees couldn't rejoice. You, you looked at the Pharisees, you could look at their face, it was always as though they carried the burdens of this world. There was always a frown on their face. They were always, their face was gloomy always. They kept the law, but they were gloomy. They were depressed. Is our joy full, saints? Is our joy full today? Do we rejoice in the Lord? You know what it depends on? It depends on what we are pursuing after. See, Jesus brought the kingdom of God. The phrase, the kingdom of God, came after Jesus came on this earth. He brought the kingdom of God. The phrase, the kingdom of God came in the New Testament with Jesus Christ. 
Until that, they had the kingdom of the earth. They had the kingdom of the earth. Everything God promised the Israelites in the Old Testament was earthly. Read Deuteronomy 28 and 29. There's not one spiritual blessing in that. It's all earthly. You'll have long life. You'll have many children. You'll have houses and you'll have lands. And you'll have flocks. And you'll increase. Your enemies will be defeated. So many things. But they were all earthly blessings. There were no heavenly blessings there. And so the whole nation now was living in that mindset for 1500 years. Imagine saying this. I hope you are, you, you are with me on this. The whole nation had that mindset that only if I get all these things, only if I am the head and not the tail, only if I am the first and not the last, only if I have more flocks, and, and, and only if I have lands, and only if I have children, and only if I have a good house to stay, only that means that God is blessing me. They were living in that mindset for 1500 years, and then there came a day where the last prophet stepped in, John the Baptist, he was called the forerunner to Jesus. And when he came, he started in preaching a message of repentance. If the word repent means turn around. Repent from what? Turn from what? Your sins? Yes. Yes, but he was also saying, turn around from that mindset that you'll have set on the earthly things. Because now, he says, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God. Things are going to change now. And, and he says, turn around, don't get occupied by earthly things. Turn away from sin and earthly things. Turn around because the kingdom of heaven is now coming. And that's what we need to preach today, saints. Not just health and wealth. That's not the gospel. Turn around from facing the earth and the earthly things because the kingdom of heaven is not just near. Jesus said it has come. And many Christians have their minds set on earthly things. I'm not saying it's wrong to use earthly things. It's very good to use earthly things. We need to use earthly things. But we don't need to set our minds on earthly things. It's good to use the internet. But Paul said. The, he also said that, make that the statement Paul in Colossians, the third chapter, I believe the third verse. He says, set your affections. Set your minds. Let's turn to Colossians chapter 3. Set your minds on the things which are above and not on the earth. Here in Colossians chapter 3, and let's read verse 1. He says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And was to set your affections on things above, not on the things of the earth. And then he talks about putting away, mortifying the deeds of our uh, flesh, fornication, uncleanness, and, and now you need to put off anger, wrath, and malice, and now you need to put on the new man. There is no Greek, nor Jew. He says, put on, the, uh, as the elect of God, uh, mercy, bowels, mercies, kindness, humbleness, forgive one another, forbear one another. He says, don't quarrel against anyone, and let the peace of God rule your hearts. See, and, this, and says, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of God. Then he talks about the husbands, love your wives. Children, obey your parents. Parents, don't provoke your children. Servants, obey your masters. Don't do eye service. Can you tell me in this, in this, all those things, where does Paul say that you'll have a lot of wealth and you'll have good health always? Because that's not what Jesus came to preach. That was not what the New Testament church apostles preached. That is another gospel that Paul is talking about. That is another Jesus that Paul is talking about. This is the truth. This is the thing that we need to seek after. Set your affections on the things which are above. Then Paul says here in 1 Corinthians, I think, the 6th or the 7th chapter where he says um, that use the word but don't abuse it. Here in 1 Corinthians and chapter 7, keep your finger in 1 John, we'll come there. But 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 31, 
He says, and they that use this world as not abusing it. Means you don't use it to the full. I, I use the internet, but I don't sit on it 24-7. I use the internet to do and browse some good things, not the filthy things that are there. I use the world. Yes, we need to use the world. We need to do some earthly jobs. And we need to go on jobs and make a living and, for, and supply for our family and take care of the family. We need to go to the store and, and purchase things. We need to do all those things, etc., etc. But the question is, where is my mind set? I'm not telling you that you only have to pursue after 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 God 24 7 leave your family as someone said that do not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly good see the Christian life is a life of balance I just don't go this way or or, or this or not to the extreme left or to the extreme right when God created the earth he put a balance in the earth when God created the universe, He put a balance in the universe. It's not lopsided. When God created our human body, He created a balance. It's, it's balanced. You can see symmetry on the left and the right of our body. It's not, it's not asymmetrical. There's a balance. When God does things, He does it in, 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 in the right proportion. He is a balanced God. He, are, he has told us, balance your life, your earthly life also. Don't in, in neglect it. Paul said we have to work a good work with, with our hands. And he does, that doesn't work is not is not supposed to eat, Paul said. We have to do all those things. But but where is my mind set upon? Where is my affections set set on? See, the apostles didn't preach health and wealth gospel. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And verse 3. See, now this is Paul again. Telling you, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us. Now, how has he blessed us? What is a sign of God's blessing? Oh, how do I know that God has blessed me? You know what he says? Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places through Christ, in Christ. But in the Old Testament, God blessed them with all the earthly blessings in Moses. That was the Old Testament. It was all earthly. God even today blesses us with earthly blessings. I'm not against it. But that's not my, 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 uh, my, my priority that I pursue after. No, that's not, that's not. Uh, that's not something that I pursue after. No, but I pursue after this. He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I believe this. A person who's turned and set his mind on heavenly things, one proof of that will be that our joy will be full. That's what, that's what our joy will be full. Because it's not dependent on earthly things. Our joy should never be dependent on, on earthly things. So let's turn to Romans chapter 14. Here's Paul again talking about the kingdom of God. Romans and chapter 14. I'm going through this lesson quickly. Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. He says, For the kingdom of God is not just meat and drink. It's not just eating and drinking. We can add some more things to meat and drink. We can say the kingdom of God is not just fun or outings or entertainment or clothes. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't go out on a vacation. That shouldn't, doesn't mean that we don't dress modestly or we don't eat or we don't drink. When I say drink, it's not uh, alcohol and all those things. I'm talking about having a nice spread having a nice lunch or having a nice dinner it's not it's not that you shouldn't have all those things it shouldn't doesn't mean you shouldn't go out on an outing but that's not the major thing he says the kingdom of god is not just doing all those things but if you are constantly occupied with these things if you are constantly occupied with 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 clothes and entertainment and outing and uh, and eating and and drinking having a sumptuous uh, meal and going out 
for lunch and dinner every time and, and going on vacations 10 times in a year. If you're only thinking on that, if you're only occupied with the cares of this world and, and your investments and enjoyment and shopping, I want to tell you that you can never rejoice in the Lord. You can never rejoice in the Lord. We will, all, we will always be gloomy and grumbling and depressed majority of the times. And many people think, is that the sad commentary that many Christians want to be occupied with earthly things and at the same time, they also want joy and peace and no stress and no anxiety. You can't have both together. It's impossible. Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. You can't, you can't. If you want freedom, you have to give up something. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed, but for that, we have to give up. We have to set our affections. We have to give up setting up our affections on the world, and we have to set our affections on Christ now, on heaven. There's a story that there was a little girl whose hand was stuck in a flower vase. And she went to her mother and said, Mom, my hand is stuck in the vase and I can't get it out. Please help me. They tried getting it out and, and it's what it wasn't coming out. And the mother said, you just straighten your fingers. Straighten your fingers and then you can get your hand out of the vase. The girl said, I cannot straighten my fingers because, because I'm holding a coin in my fingers. If she wanted her hand to come out of the vase, she had to let go of the coin that was in her hand. If you want freedom, saints, we have to give up something. And unless we won't give up what we are holding to, in this case, we are holding on to the world and its affections. If we don't give up what we are holding on to, we won't have freedom. We won't have that, that, that joy and that peace. But there will always be depression and gloom and anger and anxiety and murmurings. Your joy can never be full. But it says here in Romans 14, the kingdom of God is not just meat and drink, but what? But it is righteousness. Oh, but righteousness was in the Old Testament too. Yeah, but he, Paul doesn't stop there. It says, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit not just brings righteousness now, but along with it, it brings peace and joy. What is peace? Peace is freedom from anxiety and fear. That's peace. When there is no anxiety, when there is no fear, oh, what will happen to me tomorrow? What will happen to my job? Will I, will I get a new job? Uh, what about my children? Uh, what about my house? So many fears, so many anxiety this world has, but we can be free from that. I'm not saying we should not be concerned about our children. We need to be concerned, but we don't need to be anxious. There's a difference between being concerned and being anxious. We don't need to be anxious. So peace is being free from fear and anxiety. Since being Christians, it is, it is very important as we need to be free from sin, we also need to be free from fear. Fear is not for us. So we need to be fear, free from fear and anxiety. And what is joy? Joy is freedom from depression and gloom and self-condemnation. So now the Holy Spirit brings us righteousness but it also brings along with it it brings peace freedom from a free a fear and anxiety and also joy that is freedom from depression and gloom and self-condemnation and you can't have this life says without you seek the kingdom of god without you first seek the kingdom of god let's now come back to matthew 6 where is where we started and we we read that, I believe we didn't read the entire thing, we only read up to these things the Gentiles seek after. But what do we need to seek after now? Matthew 6 and verse 33. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. These are Jesus' words. And all these things, whatever you're thinking of, God knows how much you need, how many clothes you need, and how many, uh, what all things you need to eat. And what, how, what house you need to live and what are your expenses. He knows all these things will be added. But that's not the thing that I seek after. Those are the things that are just added as a bonus. But what I seek after is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's very, very important to, to 
for our uh, for our minds to stay on the earth, for, on heavenly things. It's very important to set your affections on the things which are above. It's not just health and wealth. This is the deception that is going on in today's world. And John, I believe in his epistle, also talks about this deception. He talks about this deception here. Let me see. In the second chapter of the first epistle of John in verse 26. Now these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. The seducing spirits, the deception, that is what John also wrote about in his gospel. Now here is an apostle of Jesus warning God's people that beware of the health and the wealth gospel. Do not be deceived. We need the anointing. That is what he said in verse 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you and you not, need not that any man teach you. But the same anointing teaches you of all things what is true and, in, and, and no lie. And even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. And he says in verse 28, Now I say little children, See, where John was concerned, everyone there in that church was a little child in Christ compared to John. And he said, now, now little children, abide in him. Abide in him. Don't look after, don't go after all those things. Because if you seek after the worldly things, you will never have joy and peace. You'll always, you'll always be bogged down by the cares of this world. And I looked at it on Friday night. The cares of this world will choke the word of God in our hearts. We won't have faith because the word of God will be choked in our hearts. It's a, it's a thorny ground. A life full of cares and depression and anxiety is a thorny ground. The word of God can't prosper in that heart. And he says, abide in Christ, abide in Him, so that when He shall appear, we may have confidence. We will not be a part of those people that are ashamed when Jesus comes. Now this is concerning the rewards that we will be getting after Jesus comes. This, there will be two groups of people in the first resurrection that when Jesus comes, some people will stand with confidence that Jesus, yes, I, I, I served you and you alone and I had set my affections on the things which are above. But there, was, there will be some people that, 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 that were not wholehearted serving Christ. They were not serving Christ wholeheartedly and they will be ashamed at His coming. Saints, but we need to be in the group that has confidence. I am not here to judge anyone. But this is what the scripture teaches us. How do I live after I was converted is very important. That will matter when Jesus comes. No one will be able to put on a show or no one will be able to 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 to, to impress Jesus. Jesus knows everything. We, we will not even be able to open up our mouths before him because he knows everything. So saints let us set our affections on things which are above. See that's what that's what John talks about here. Let's read some verses in first John chapter two, verse fifteen. He says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father. And the world passeth away, verse 17, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God. He that continues to, to obey God's word and live according to the word of God and, and pursue after, after heavenly things will abide forever. Let's, let's, Let's have our minds straightened out, saints. Let's set our affections on the right things. Let's let's do that. There's a lot of lot many things that he talks about in overcoming. He, he uses the word overcome it or overcome many times in his in, in his epistle. He uses the he talks a lot about love. Love your brothers, love your sisters, love love your family members, love the ones around you. That is what John is talking about. Just imagine this was the last time John knew he was writing the letter. And you know what he chose to write about? He chose to write about life, eternal life. 
fellowship, deception, love, overcoming. What is the world and how many to forsake the world? And, and, and all those things, that was, that was the theme, that was something that John wanted to major on. And that is what, saints, we need to also major on in our days. Our, 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 our investments and our wealth is not going to help us. That doesn't mean we don't need to do investments. We need to save up for the rainy day. But my heart is not set after that. That's not the thing I depend on. That's something that I am keeping handy, which will help me in the days to come. But that's not something that my life is dependent on. But that's not something that I am pursuing after. And what I am pursuing after is the kingdom of God. That's where I have set my mind and my heart and my affections. And that is what will give us joy and peace. I have joy and I have peace. I have rest deep down in my soul. The word of God is cleansing me and making me whole. I'm headed for the kingdom and its and its treasures untold. For this joy and this peace. Uh, there's, a, there's an old chorus. I, I, whenever I try to quote a chorus, it never comes to my mind. Uh, but I hope we know that chorus. I have joy and I have peace. I have a rest down in my soul. The word of God is cleansing me and making me whole. I'm headed for the kingdom and its treasures untold for this joy and for this peace and this rest down in my soul. And I mean, that's, that's the chorus and that's what, that's what our, our mind is set on. It's not set on the things of this world because the world is passing away. If the world was passing away 2,000 years ago, I mean, the world is on on, uh, we, are, we are in the last few seconds of this age. Let's not hang on to anything that's in the world. Let's use it, but let's not abuse it. Let's not use it so much that we do not have time to seek after the kingdom of God. And God has shown us that in the last one year for or 14 months. He's shown us that. But nothing of this world is, 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 is stable. Anything can happen anytime. But the promises of God are, is the only thing that is stable. The kingdom of God is the only thing that is stable. And that will be permanent. That is eternal. So let's seek after that. Let's, let's introspect our lives. How are we living? Are we living like the world? Or are we living like the children of the kingdom? Do we, are we, do we still have anxiety and stress and depression or is there love and joy and peace? Let's, let's examine that. Let's examine that in our personal lives and may the Lord help us. Thank God for the church. Thank God for being with us here today. I hope and pray that this word will sink deep down in our hearts and we'll have an unction from the Holy Spirit. It's not that every time the preacher needs to teach us all these things but, but once the Holy Spirit convicts us saints and we accept it, there, that makes a difference in our life. John said, I will keep saying this, but it will not help you unless the anointing from heaven above comes and teaches you, puts those words deep down in your heart and it becomes a part of your life. Unless that happens, John says, no matter how many men come and teach you, nothing's going to happen. Let not that happen with us, but let's understand. May the Lord give us understanding and help us so how to live our lives in this present age. So let's continue to pray for, for, the, for the brothers and sisters in the body of Christ throughout the ministers. Let's continue to pray for the ones that are suffering from COVID-19. It's good to see that and all the saints in Nagar also have recovered from the COVID-19 virus. Let's continue to remember all those, all the saints, not only here in, in, in India, but also across the world. Uh, saints we know, we don't know, let's continue to remember the body of Christ, the ministers, brethren and sisters, Sanji, let's remember them in our prayers. They have given their love and they have sent their regards to each and every one of you. And they are praying for, for each and every one of you. Let's remember them in our prayers. And let's pray the Lord helps us to live right. In this in this world that we are in right now. 
Amen. Let's all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us time to dive into your word and opening up your word to our hearts. And I pray that let these words have an effect on our lives. Not just words, Father, but let your anointing come and touch and take these words and, and, and take it deeper into our hearts. Let it be written on the fleshy tables of our heart, O oh God. And let it be there forever and help us to be to be to be ruled and run by your word father we don't want to be deceived by things going on in the religious world outside we don't want our minds to be set on the worldly things and the earthly things but help us to set our affections above and you be with us you strengthen us lord you give us your wisdom and understanding you touch our eyes that we may see you touch our hearts that we can perceive Touch our ears that we hear. Anoint us, O oh God, our eyes and our ears and our hearts that we will see and hear and perceive and believe. And we will not be ruled by the things around us, but we'll be, we will be ruled by the, by the kingdom, by the principles of the kingdom of God. Help us, Father. Be with all the saints that need your healing touch throughout this body. And need to bless all the saints, O oh God. Continue to be with us as we live in these days. Continue to provide our needs, O oh Father. We look unto you and you alone to help us in these times that we are living in. And bless all your children, the ministers throughout the body of Christ, the churches, brother and sister Senji. Continue to cover them and protect them and keep them. And be with each and every one of us till we meet again. Lord, make a way for us to come back into your sanctuary, Father, and be with us. Ask you, ask you all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you.